Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykantz, Superintendent of Schools. Joining me today are four special guests. Paul Richards, Principal of Needham High School, Tom Denton, Guidance Director, and two students, Dan Otushik and Matt Barnes, who are participating in the high school's new Global Competency Program. Welcome. Uh, as you know, the district has uh, recently approved three goals for the school system. Uh, and today's conversation is about goal three, which is to promote active citizenship. A key part of goal three, promoting active citizenship, is global competency, and in particular the global competency program at, at Needham High School. Mr. Richards, I'd like to begin with you, and perhaps you can share with us why global competency and, and, and what's that all about? Uh, sure. I mean, we're very excited about this program. Um, I think I heard it summed up very nicely recently by a, a neighboring superintendent who said schools these days need to prepare kids for their futures and not our past. And I think their future uh, involves global issues and global competencies. And, you know, I, I, we're trying to focus on competencies. Th these are skills that we think students need to be successful in. Uh, I think what we all agree is a very changing uh, world out there and, and an interconnected world. So um, certainly there's a lot of awareness and, and education that goes on here in the classrooms, but we also want to develop specific skills that will help our graduates uh, thrive. That's great, and it certainly uh, does allow us to promote active citizenship because we want students to be aware of what's going on locally, certainly, but, but globally as, as well. Mr. Denton, maybe you can explain a little bit about why global competency is important today, and, and, and maybe particularly, what are the three goals of the program at the high school? Sure, absolutely. And um, I'm on the, my job on the committee is really to review the applicants and, and the portfolios that they submit in, which the students will be talking about later. But <clears throat> first um, is really to think globally. And really what that means is um, to really know your place in the world. You know, to know that there's, you know, about other countries and other cultures, really both through um, experiences here at Needham High School, but also through travel. Um, I mean, I think it's very, very important for students to begin to understand, um, really as, as, as early as possible, how interconnected, you know, the world is, both uh, on so many different levels. And, and I think also, uh, if you're taking courses, social studies, et cetera, um, it really adds to your ability to kind of understand um, the, the wider perspective in terms of uh, different cultures, governments, et cetera. So that's certainly thinking globally is, is a big one. Uh, the next one is really, it's about the language requirement. Um, you know, as a, as a country, um, it's, it's, uh, as a community, it's very important that our students be able to communicate in, um, with the people around the world in terms of developing proficiency in other languages. So that, that's very, very key. And if I might add, it's not just uh, taking two years of a foreign language, as I understand it, but it really truly is to think about proficiency. Uh, Needham has for a long time, uh, and perhaps Matt and Dan were involved in this, had, has had a, uh, an elementary language program growing up through the middle school into the high school. Unfortunately, uh, the elementary program is, is on a hiatus uh, right now. But uh, proficiency and really understanding the language and competency in the language is, has been the goal, not just a, a simple two-year right. requirement. Right. So that's I mean, it, really, it really is a four-year requirement. And so, so you need to finish your fourth year in whatever language uh, you're studying. And, and really the last one is uh, to really look at um, how you contribute and how you participate in, in kind of the global world. And there's requirements that you can satisfy uh, locally in terms of the kind of multicultural kinds of activities um, that are available. So it, it really is to uh, really understand yourself in relationship to, to other cultures, uh, other people, other customs, um, and to, by participating, kind of add that perspective to the people you, that you're, you're visiting or, or working with. So it's, it's really those three things. And those three, those three areas outline what the, what the program is, and, and uh, perhaps Dan and Matt can comment on the specifics in a moment. But, uh, Mr. Richards, as I think about this, how, how did this get initiated, and, and how was it funded? I know the, the Needham Education Foundation, which has been a big supporter of the schools and continues to be, was a big part of it, but how did it originate? Yeah, you know, it really started with some work by uh, several members of the high school and the community uh, through the East Asian Studies uh, Initiative, where they developed these competencies that you can see today. Uh, but there really was no vehicle to deliver these uh, at the high school level. 
uh, we were incredibly fortunate to have the NEF, as you mentioned, uh, give us uh, a large grant so that we could hire a consultant, uh, Amy Goldman, to help research what's out there, how we could make this happen. How you know we we had a committee, and, and Tom was on there, and Matt, and you know we tried to find a way to. Uh, build a structure so students could develop these competencies while they're in high school, not something that was going to be just an add-on to, you know, yet another thing, but to, to focus their efforts so that after four years they could say that they had this great experience and they developed these skills. So the NEF uh, made it happen. Uh, this conversation started several years ago and the fact that the district now has a goal that supports this uh, I think gives it a lot of momentum and a lot of credibility. Well, that's one of the other aspects of the program that, that is unique and special, and that is that it's not an add-on. In fact, it's taking a lot of the work that, that our students are already doing and providing a structure around it and a focus so that they can, in the end, earn a certificate. And I know we'll, we'll check in. Uh, we, we certainly can check in about that. Uh, and and maybe, maybe we can start there, Dan and, and, and Matt. Uh, you are, Dan, you are, uh, you've recently traveled to uh, South America and, and where else? Uh, last summer, I was in Malaga, Spain, for two weeks. Okay, and Matt, you're uh, you're anticipating going to Peru this summer. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going on a month-long trip through World Challenge with a group from the school. We're doing community service, hiking, all that for a month. Oh, completely that, immersed. That's true. Well, we, we have to get into that, but maybe you can outline for us what are the what are the, the major components of the the Global Competency Program that students need to get involved in and and. Uh, if they wish to earn a certificate of global competency. Certainly a major one is the international travel requirement, which um, is certainly important in helping a student become open to other cultures outside of their, their own. However, uh, I was in San Francisco for four months, four weeks, two, uh, two summers ago, and I found really that a lot of a lot of these things can be accomplished nationally. You don't need to leave the United States now to to come into contact with many other many other cultures and a lot of diversity. And I was there um, helping inner city kids whose parents spoke Spanish learn to read and write English, um, as well as two summer uh, last summer when I was in. Malaga, however, it, it, it is definitely different leaving the United States, coming completely immersed in a foreign culture, new ideas. It's certainly a bit daunting at times, but overall it's definitely a rewarding experience. So international travel is a key component, or certainly an international experience by interacting with diverse cultures is a key component. What's, what else is part of the program? Well, of course, there's the foreign language requirement. Um, you need to complete four years of a language in the high school and and you're studying Spanish I am studying Spanish and, and you're studying I'm studying French okay and as Matt can perhaps talk about you you do not necessarily need to travel to a country um, that speaks the language that you are studying however in my case I did I, I went to Spain and you can see how useful that that skill can be even within the United States, traveling to an area like Miami, um, anywhere in the Southwest, you, you find that knowing Spanish is a huge advantage. Right, and as Dan said, although I'm taking French, I'm going to Peru, and I'm learning some Spanish, and I'm finding French is helping me a lot to learn Spanish to help me in Peru. And I think although, although I'm not using my Span I mean my French necessarily in Peru, French has helped me to see even more of the world, because I'm seeing the French-speaking parts as well as now seeing part of the Spanish parts of the world, like Peru. And I think that even though I'm not completely utilizing the French part, it's still helping me. It's great. So travel, foreign language, what's the next component, Dan? Well, the next component is global service. And that includes uh, taking one of your community service credits, which Something is that you already do at Needham High School and right. required to do. One is 30 hours, and somehow incorporating a global outlook on into your community service uh, credit. And the program is very helpful with this. They provide a lot of different ways that, that you can uh, accomplish this. And 
I was able to do mine as I touched on before um, in San Francisco, just helping out there uh, in the city. Talk a little bit about what you did and with whom. Sure. Um, there was a program where four weeks, it, it was called uh, Mitzvah Corps, and four weeks in the city just doing community service there, two weeks uh, in one project, two weeks in another. Um, the program that I was in first is called 826 Valencia. There's uh, one just opened up in Boston recently. And that, as I stated before, helps um, kids come in and they improve their English language skills through writing and reading. That's great. Yeah, that's great. And you, in Peru, you'll be doing some service as well. What yes. will what will that look like? Uh, Do you know. During our four week trip to Peru, we're spending a week of it on the shores of Lake Titicaca, which is in southern Peru, and we're living in a village completely immersed with local cultures who don't see the outside world that much. And while we don't have the particulars yet, we're planning to help them renovate community buildings they have. We're going to probably paint a school, and we're going to just help build things. Some groups in the past have built playgrounds. And a lot of it is also just while we're there with the community, we'll, we'll be helping them with English classes, we'll be playing games with them, playing soccer against the locals. Um, and it's just really bringing them to our culture and, sh and them showing us theirs. You know, it, it strikes me, uh, uh, Mr. Denton, Mr. Richards, that the, the trips from, from before that, that high school students and, and high schools are used to or the, the spring fling, if you will, to, to Paris or, or to Madrid. And this is, this is taking students to at, at a different level. Um, that was important to you in the development of this program. Yeah, absolutely. This, as you can see, the, these are not tours where you get on a bus and you tour around and, and look at five cities in four days. These, this is an active process, and, and kids are, are doing this program. Um, which is deliberate. Um, you know, when learning becomes this active, it results in growth. And that's what really this program is all about, is, is personal growth of these students. Sometimes we, we live in a, a bit of a sheltered world, uh, so these kids are getting out of Needham. Uh, they're, they're trying things, they're learning from it, they're growing tremendously. Um, and that's, I think, the main reason we're really excited is because we see what kids like Matt and Dan have done, and we want to expose as many students as possible to those types of experiences. So we have, we have, we have travel, we have uh, the language, we have service, and there's one more component, uh, Dan. Right, and that's really just the extracurricular activities that you may choose to do. And once again, the, the program provides a lot of different examples of how you might do this, um, how you might incorporate global competence into your everyday activities. Um, that can be as simple as reading a book, watching a movie, going to a restaurant, and just having, um, just looking at it in a way from a different perspective and seeing how this different culture, or this different way of thinking has um, influenced your own. And it's, and, and yeah. I, I think I think these are these are a lot easier than everyone thinks because <laughs> just in taking part in planning <coughs> our trip, I've read two books on the country, and I've seen films and I've I've tried the food and it's just just getting yourself ready to go and it allows you through doing these to get a better experience while you're there. I'm guessing because I'll be more accustomed to what to expect and I'll know what I want to see and what what I should expect to see. And it'll allow me to be more acclimatized when I get. And how many students are going to Peru? We have about me? 30 going in two groups. About 30. Uh, in, in fact, what, which, how many, what trips are planned? I mean, right now, as we speak, actually, we have some students and, and staff in Costa Rica um, on, on an exchange and, and actually doing some service in Costa Rica. There's some other trips planned. Sure. We have a, a group of our Habitat for Humanity Club is going to North Carolina next week. We have a, um, a group of students, uh, part of an exchange with Germany, uh, going with Mr. Batra in the spring. Uh, and uh, we're going to start recruiting this week and next week uh, for our China exchange, which is brand new, and also our, our exchange with a high school in Albertville, France, which will now be in its second, uh, second year of doing that. So, um, you know, we, we felt a bit of a responsibility to provide these opportunities because the students are asking for this. Not only are they asking for it, they're doing them anyways, as you mentioned earlier. 
Um, so the, the, the interest is there. We felt that we could make this happen in high school. Uh, it's, it's one of the reasons why um, we're so excited about it because it actually allows students to become very active. Um, but there are, as you mentioned, a lot, a lot more exchange type uh, trips, a lot more service type trips as opposed to the classic you know, let's let's pay a lot of money and just get on a bus and, and tour around. So this is these are very active and, and growth oriented trips. So the the outcome now of the global competency program, and I believe Dan, you've participated in this already, and you you you've you've accomplished everything for the the portfolio, which leads to a certificate. Although I understand you have to finish your 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 last year of of Spanish. Yes, right? I have to pass Spanish. This so time. what was involved in uh, the portfolio, and and, and 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 Mr. Denton, I know you've been involved in uh, certainly the development of that and, and, and reviewing that. them, right? You're reviewing them right now. Right. So what, what do students have to do for the portfolio? Um, well, I mean, Dan can certainly add in, but the, the, you know, the piece that, um, and, and all this is on the Needham High School website. You know, on the front page, you go and you get all this information, walk you right through it. Uh, very, very helpful s a series of linkages. The, you know, there's, there's a resume that you need to present which talks about the travel, which talks about the, um, uh, <laughs> the extracurricular activities, um, but I think the most important thing that f from my point of view is being able to read the student's reflective essay, which is really where they talk about the, the experience that they've had and how it's affected them. Um, and it's, it's really back to, to, to what Paul was mentioning in terms of students really actively participating in these, in these travels. And it's really clear that the students are really affected by it. They're affected by it both uh, in terms of uh, whether it's the poverty, the different lifestyles, the, the different cultures. Um, and students come away from, from these experiences, um, I think, really matured and, and, and really further along in their development. Um, it's very impressive. Right, and the great thing about doing the, the resume and the reflective essay, which I hadn't really anticipated, was that it forced me to take all of these things that I had done and, and kind of put them into to one program. And I was able to see, wow, like I, I've done all these things, I, I've learned all of this, this information and, and about all these different kinds of cultures and people, and it's, and it's something that I want to continue to do. And once, I've com once I completed it, it, it wasn't as if I was like, okay, now I'm globally competent, I'm, <laughs> I'm all done. No, it, it's definitely that something that I, I want to continue to do it's throughout my entire life. Um, it's not just something that will help me in the workplace, give me an advantage. It's something that, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's really interesting. And that I know that I will want to do in the future. So you will get uh, a certificate at the end. In fact, how many, how many students have uh, achieved the certificate so far? Uh, it's probably about a, little, about a dozen. About a dozen or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and w will they, Mr. Richards, will they re receive the certificate at the end of the year? Will it be noted on their transcri how, transcript? How sure. Um, students who have completed the certification get a letter from me that they can, uh, it goes into their file that they can use for whatever purposes, whether applying to programs or applying to colleges. Uh, in the spring, probably um, in some of our end of the year events, we'll find a way to recognize the students who That'd have, be great. Who have uh, completed the certification. So we're still working that piece out. But, but as Tom mentioned, uh, we have a dozen, I know there are probably two or three dozen students out there actively working on it, getting advice from us of how to proceed. And I think this will pr is a program that will grow pretty rapidly. Okay. And to be clear on this. Anyone at Needham High School can participate in the Global Competency Program. This isn't for, for those students in, in Accelerated Spanish or AP French. This is for all students. That's the intent. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I know when, when I was on the steering committee, that was one of the things we really focused on, was making sure that everyone, no matter what your academic abilities, no matter what your family's financial capabilities were, that this was something you could do if you wanted it, and that you could, that everybody could take these experiences and gain from them. And that's something that I know we strive for, and I think we got it. Well, and I, I think that's interesting because of the, of the four areas that you outlined, uh, of travel and, and language and service and, and co-curricular or extracurricular activities, the one that some 
may find little out of reach is the travel. So could you both talk a little bit about that? How, how, how do you accomplish this travel? If you are a typical Needham High School student who is already immersed in, in athletics or activities and academics, as everyone is, and uh, there's also an upcoming uh, exchange or trip, how does one afford that? Well, I know uh, World Challenge specifically, when we first got together over a year ago, and we're still six months away from going, they, the one of the first things they gave us was a financial plan. And we sat through as a group, took about a half hour, and we went through, they showed us what the cost was, and then they showed us all the ways you can make money. And at that time, we had two years, and they said, if you can make just a little bit every month, you'll see that you can afford this entire trip. And I personally am well on my way to paying for the trip. And, with, and I know my parents are probably going to pay some of it, but I'm planning to pay it back. I'm working. What are you doing for work? How are you, I, uh, how are you making this happen? Over the summer, I work with uh, kids at the Needham Track Club. And for the part, I'm not uh, away this summer. And I also referee hockey games, making money during the winter. So w wouldn't it just be a lot easier, Matt, if uh, your folks just wrote out a check or maybe your grandparents sent in some money uh, the holidays? W wouldn't that be easier? Easier, yes, but okay. I think uh, raising the money is a lot of the experience, and it shows it makes you work harder. It makes you really get the full benefit out of this, since you're not your parents aren't just writing a check. You're invested in it from the beginning. There's a certain level of commitment to it then. Definitely, because once I get there, I don't want to. I really want to make it worth something because I've put a lot into it beforehand, and I'm intending to get a lot out of it. And are all of your, your, your peers who are going to Peru, are they working as well and they're trying to come up with a plan to, to make this happen well, for them? We're, we're also doing a lot of group fundraising. Um, we're having a rose sale right now. We've done car washes in the past. We've done bottle drives. And this is for the group money because the way World Challenge does it, they provide the bare essentials. And then we, <coughs> anything extra we want to do, like wet water rafting and stuff, we have to pay for. So we're all working towards it. And I don't know what everyone else is doing, but I know a lot of people are, are at least paying part or most of their trip. It strikes me that a, a trip like this and, and the ones that you've taken uh, and your experience in, in San Francisco, which is not globally, but the experience arguably was a global experience, uh, it's a lot easier, it's a lot more comfortable to stay at home in the summer, to hang out with your friends, uh, maybe work, uh, go to the Cape, uh, this is going to push you, it seems, a little bit, or your experience in San Francisco. I mean, in a way, this takes you out of your comfort zone. Why would you want to go and do something that makes you uncomfortable? Well, I know Matt can talk a little bit, a bit about a uh, homestay in a foreign country. As can I, before high school, I spent two weeks um, living with a Costa Rican family. And yes, it can be very uncomfortable at times. However, in the end, everyone's just so nice and so welcoming that you have to force yourself to get over it and you gain so much more. What did, what did you gain? What did you, what did, what did you learn about any one of your experience or, or Matt even your experience in Japan? What did you learn about yourself? What's one thing? Well I think, I think it's a really eye-opening experience to go to a foreign culture. When I went to Japan in eighth grade it was a just shorter than two weeks over April break and we a lot of it was immersed. We spent four days living with a homestay family. And uh, most of the time it was us and then the Japanese culture. I was immersed with my family. I saw other Needham kids at school every once in a while, but it was really me with the culture. And it really, it showed me a lot about myself in that I'm capable of going out and uh, doing things that I want to do in the world and going out and really being a major part of the global world. And I still, I still uh, have emails with the people I stayed with, and I still communicate with them, and I'm planning to go back to Japan someday to, to reconnect with them and to continue. Uh, wh where are you, what are you anticipating in Peru? Any, uh, any particular challenge besides the, the language? Um, well, we're also doing, we're going on a week-long hiking expedition, and the trip itself, we're not staying in like five-star, four-star hotels. We're staying in hostels, and we're really getting the, the basics of the culture and really being immersed in it. And I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting people in the in the village we're staying in that I can connect with throughout my life and that I can learn from them and hopefully they can learn something from me that I can then take back here and really realize how fortunate we are. Because looking back, there are things in Japan that 
we take for granted that they don't have, and it was just, wow, I, I didn't even realize how important that is. And in Peru, I'm expecting a lot more of the same, because, I mean, I'm used to, like, the, the TV studio we're in right now, they don't have that where we're going, and they won't have as many computers, and it's just getting back down to the basics and really appreciating what we have and learning how other people live without it. There, there must have been, uh, Dan or, or Matt, an experience that you had that, that had to be humorous uh, that you laugh back now on uh, your trip either to Japan or to Spain. Uh, is there anything that happened to you that you can share with us anyhow uh, that, that uh, you remember that was particularly meaningful or even humorous? Well, there's, yeah, there's a lot of different things that I can think of that I'll, I'll share one. I know in, when I was in Costa Rica and um, living with with this family uh, that I, I really grew to become really close with of my time there. Um, they lived in a very, very small uh, house and the shower was in the kitchen. And so I was just terrified of going in and taking a shower. So for the first week living there, I just did not take a shower. And um, I, I, we did go in like, um, waterfalls and stuff so I was able to to wash up a little bit but I, I was still just so embarrassed and eventually I just got over that and just right. I think uh, one of the funniest things I had in Japan was while we were driving from the airport when we first got there there was some English on some signs that just completely didn't make sense and it was there were things like go home get money just <laughs> random random words that they were clearly trying to convey some message, but just made no sense to us. And we, we found that funny on the bus. It was just a lot of random things. Mr. Denton and Mr. Richards, it seems to me these students, in many ways, mirror the other students who mm -hmm. have grown and have learned a lot. And I imagine in the, in the guidance office you're seeing that, and the students are talking about it, and Mr. Richards, in your experience. There's a lot of yeah. growth here. We're, we're hoping that this provides some different options when they leave Needham High School that they may never have thought of when they, uh, when they entered. Right. And, and just to, to underline what Dan and, and Matt said, it, it, you also get a sense of these are students who, because of their experiences, are, are so much more confident and so much more capable uh, in terms of their ability to kind of see outside of Needham and to see even outside of Massachusetts as a, as a world that they can participate in. And that's just, you know, it's exactly what we want. So language, service, Travel and participation in extracurricular activities will earn you a global uh, competency certificate in Needham High School, a program that uh, fortunately the, the, uh, the, the high school community was able to launch through the, the efforts of the Needham Education Foundation. Uh, and it certainly, clearly, from what I'm, I'm learning uh, today, uh, supports uh, goal three, promoting active citizenship. And it, abs it absolutely reflects the values that, that the school system is, has begun to embrace. Thanks very much for sharing this Thank today. Thank you.